Not many teams come back from a 4-1 defeat at the Nou Camp in the first leg of a Champions League tie, especially teams only featuring in their first European quarter-final for 10 years. Yet maybe after topping a group of death featuring Atletico Madrid and Chelsea, it was obvious that this Roma team had something about them. But the 3-0 win that took them through to the semi-finals made the world stand up and take notice. This is how Roma and the tactics of their manager Eusebio Di Francesco shocked Europe. Now, the question is whether they can do it again. After Francesco Totti's retirement, losing Mo Salah to Liverpool, Antonio Rudiger to Chelsea and Luciano Spalletti leaving, having amassed 87 Serie A points last term, you'd have been forgiven for not expecting much from the Giallo Rossi this season. But Roma have carried on the momentum that's seen them moving in an upwardly mobile direction under ambitious new owners in recent years. That's in no small part down to Di Francesco, a man who helped the club to their last Scudetto as a tireless midfielder back in 2000-2001. After five successful years in charge at Sassuolo, who he guided to promotion from Serie B, numerous respectable finishes and a Europa League campaign, the Roma hierarchy brought him back into the fold. Describing it as the ideal formation, Di Francesco almost always favours a 4-3-3 although the second leg of the Barcelona tie showed that he's not afraid to mix it up when required. By switching to a 3-4-2-1, Roma nullified the La Liga champions in waiting while still allowing them the attack potency to get the three goals they needed to knock them out. But although using the same approach at Anfield looked like a good move for the first 20 minutes, persisting with a high line saw them annihilated by the pace and movement of Liverpool's front three. Ordinarily, Roma employ a pragmatic 4-3-3 that shifts to a 4-5-1 when out of possession and requires defensive responsibility from wide men, a midfield trio regularly made up of at least two of Kevin Strootman, Daniele De Rossi and Raja Nyangalan is a match for anyone and provides a solid blend of experience, nous, physicality and attacking threat. At the back, Roma are marshalled by Costas Manolas and Federico Fazio, playing in front of one of the best young keepers in the world, Alisson and have gone their whole Champions League campaign without conceding a goal at home. Attack-minded fullbacks like Alexander Kolarov and Alessandro Florenzi chip in with a good number of assists and pre-assists, either crossing directly for Edin Dzeko or by drawing in defenders and creating space for midfielders to set up the big Bosnian. After being reduced to a bit part role towards the end of his time at Manchester City, Dzeko has landed on his feet in the Italian capital, scoring a club record 39 goals last season and can still cause any team problems, even at the age of 32. Add the unpredictable Stefan El Shirawi and exciting young signings like Sengiz Under and Patrick Schick into the mix and you've got a team that can pretty much do the lot. Dynamic and possession orientated, but not afraid to use their physicality to their advantage, counter-attack or press, Roma have found a way to get results against some of Europe's biggest teams this season. But it's not just on the pitch where things are looking bright. Ex Sevilla sporting director Monchi, the man responsible for bringing Dani Alves and Ivan Rakitic to Andalusia, is now on board in Rome. Meanwhile, plans to move from the somewhat dated and often half empty Olimpico to a new state of the art stadium are well underway. Di Francesco's methods might not necessarily be anything revolutionary, but he's got his side right on board and given them a real sense of purpose, as he recently explained to The Guardian, saying, What we do is a job, but it needs to be fun too. It should be a joy. That's why I always say to the lads, the first thought is to prepare to enjoy ourselves together and work hard. They have to enjoy themselves. This is a game, first of all. It's an approach that's working well so far. The only things that remain to be seen are how far it can take them and whether they can pull off another miracle against Liverpool, which would take them to the brink of history.